Hi, I'm Max Walker-Williams. Thanks ever so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at HBAR versus Constellations DAG. So what is DAG? We're going to get into that in a second. And just before we start the video, I just want to make people aware. If you're new to the channel, hi and welcome. Um, I'm not going to be super, super heavy into the HBAR side because I've done that quite a few times in all my HBAR versus videos. So I don't want to bore my day ones who've been with me all the way through. And they, you know, they know about Hadira Hashcraft, they know about HBAR. They don't need me to keep telling them over and over again. If you're unfamiliar with HBAR uh, or Hadira Hashcraft, then I'll put a couple of links in the description below. Click on those videos, watch those videos first, Come back to this one, it'll make a lot more sense. So I'm just going to skip over the H-bar so there's something to compare to and talk about, but I'm not going to be super heavy into H-bar because it's just repetitive and boring. Okay, so with that said, H-bar, 10,000 TPS, which is obviously transactions per second uh, in, the, in the crypto space, 0.0001 of a dollar transaction cost to transact on the network, three to five seconds of finality, Byzantine fault tolerant, the pedigree, Obviously, again, if you're familiar with Adira Hashcraft, you'll know all about uh, Lehman Bird, who's, let's, let's face it, a modern day genius, mathematical genius, the Nobel Prize, everything else, and actually invented, is the, in, not an adopter of, but the inventor, the father of uh, Adira Hashcraft and the Hashcraft concept. Um, the board, we all, all know about that. Google, IBM, uh, and so on and so forth. List of, of all of the people on the board on the screen now. So some really impressive companies on the board that I've mentioned loads of times in previous videos. Partners, which is what Hadira Hashcraft seem to call customers. Partners, the Coupon Bureau. You know, uh, if you're in the UK, you might be thinking big deal, the Coupon Bureau. Billion uh, dollar industry in America, massive. Not so much in the UK, coupons, but in America, very big. Um, uh, Coupon Bureau, one of the biggest. IBM, obviously massive, Halal Systems, Power Transition, who, who are a new uh, customer. They, these guys are really interesting, you should look into this. I have actually done mentioned these guys before in a previous video, which I'll put in the link in the description below. So, oh, and by the way, at the end of the video, we're gonna have a look at this live update. This was literally announced yesterday, so I'm gonna talk quickly about some, some breaking news uh, with regards to Hadira Hashcraft. Okay, let's get into it. Constellation with DAG. Uh, which is directed cyclical, acyclical graph, okay? And I'm gonna to come to that in a second. Now, it's worth mentioning that uh, Constellation, the project, the, the, uh, the space didn't invent uh, DAG technology, but they've adapted it. And they, I would say, they're the forefront leaders in, in, within the technolo in that technology space. Now, the other thing I would say, actually, before we get into this with, uh, and I might need your, uh, your help with this a little bit, actually, because I don't know if it's me not being able to do my due diligence properly, or if it's Constellation. But I find Constellation are just a tiny little bit wishy-washy. And what I mean by that is, uh, like for example on their website, transactions per second, infinite. Really? Uh, can we see some proof of that? I mean, you know, it's a big claim. Transaction, uh, transactions per second, infinite. Doesn't just the infinite sign, the infinity, the infinite sign. So, no comment on that. And I have to be honest, I haven't read their white. Twenty six pages long. I've not read the most recent white paper. You know, word for word. I have have glanced at looking at the, at the sort of the top line numbers, and there isn't too much detail. Just oh yeah, that's our number, infinite. Right. I'd like to see a bit bit more evidence of that. And that seems to be a bit of a theme with Constellation. Now, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that they're blaggers because they're not. Uh, and I'll, 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 I, they, uh, I can prove that, and, uh, and I know that to be true. I know that for a fact. But there is just a little bit of a, you know, we're making, we're making big noises. Can we just see a little bit of substance behind this? Okay, so transactions per second, infinite versus HBARs, 10,000 transactions per second. Now, you might say, well, straight off the bat, one nil. However, I, one thing I would say about Hadira Hashgraph is that they are the opposite of this kind of thing, which is they undersell themselves, if anything. So with sharding, um, Hadira Hashcraft are going to be uh, practically uh, infinite tr uh, transactions per second. And actually with sharding, the more transactions that are taking place, the quicker they can take place. So technically speaking, the more there are, the quicker it goes. So uh, with sharding, which is again something I've explained in one of the videos that I've linked down below, um, yeah, the, the, these guys, it's, it's level pegging, if that's true, and if, and if like HBAR starts sharding. Um, but okay, let's just take them, you know, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. So okay, infinite transactions per second, impressive. Zero transaction costs. So again, 
2-0 or, or something of it. But again, uh, tra the transactional cost of uh, uh, each bar uh, on the hash graph is 0.0001 uh, dollar. So it's as good as makes no difference. Um, finality. Now, th this I really struggled with. I really struggled to find uh, Constellation's uh, claim on finality and how long finality takes. So if, for example, uh, you're in a shop and you're buying a Mars bar and you pay for it, how long does it take for that transaction to be uh, uh, registered, to be witnessed by somebody and written down in a ledger? On the blockchain, that would be on the blockchain. DAG, it's on obviously the cyclical graph. How long does that take? And that's important because it's one of the reasons Bitcoin and the likes of those can't um, work at scale is because it takes so long. And actually, the more transactions taking place, the longer it takes. So Bitcoin, you know, quote 60 minutes, but it can be a lot longer. So the reason that's important is because you're never going to go into a shop and be willing to wait 60 minutes to buy a Mars bar. For the, for the shopkeeper to stand there for 60 minutes waiting for, for confirmation, for finality, that, that the transaction has taken place. I can't find that number. So infinite transactions per second is all very well and good, but how long are they taking? I actually don't know the answer. I couldn't find it. So please let me know in the comments below if you, if you know the answer to this. What's the, what's the time to finality with a, a transaction with Constellation? They are Byzantine uh, fault tolerant, so, so that's great. And again, link in the description below if you're not sure what Byzantine fault tolerant is. The reason that's important, by the way, is for banking, because banking, Ministry of Defense, security, cybersecurity, um, anything like that, that, that requires a very, you know, the highest level of security in the world, particularly with uh, monetary, uh, the monetary system, the banking system, it has to be Byzantine fault tolerant. And there are only literally a handful of cryptocurrencies that are, I think it might actually only be four, but um, it, could, it could be a couple more that I, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with. Pedigree. This is where uh, Constellation for me, and this kind of comes full circle back to the wishy-washiness, is that, and this is not, I'm not judging the guy at all, um, but Ben um, Jorgensen is, uh, uh, is the CEO and co-founder of Constellation, and he's an entrepreneur. Nothing wrong with that. I'm an entrepreneur. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when you're looking at the two founders of two different projects, one is described on the internet for, uh, for, for, first and foremost as an entrepreneur, a guy who's looking to create something out of nothing, and which is great, uh, you know, create jobs and create wealth, and, and that's all very well and good and fine. And it, but I almost get the feeling a little bit that this could be Twitter. It could be anything. It's just a vehicle, if you like, to a destination. Whereas with Lehman, um, you know, it's the, the last thing this is about is the money. This is the opposite of a vehicle. It's his life's work. It's, it's his genius. It's his legacy. It's, it's him. He and it are one. It, it came from his brain. He literally invented it. Now, I don't know, I don't know Ben. I'm not judging him. I'm just saying from my point of view, you know, just with my humble point of view, standing on the sidelines, looking in, one guy is a maths genius who appears to me to not care about the money and not care about um, the, the anything except being carbon neutral and building better systems for future generations. And then you've got an entrepreneur. Which one is going to sort of die by the sword and fight tooth and nail for their project? And which one is more likely to sell out? I don't, and I'm not saying that's the case. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there is a question mark there. So, not a math genius. So he might be. Well, he's just not. He's just never told anyone. Um, okay, partners. So constellation for uh, you know a relatively new project. We've got some pretty impressive uh, partners. What they call customers. Um, Ab the two. I mean, there are a few, but the ones that are really worth mentioning are Amazon Web Services. So um, Amazon Web Services is a service that allows you to build websites on the internet through their platform um, and, and do loads of other things, e-commerce and that sort of stuff. It, when you build your website, you're doing that through Amazon Web Services, but they are doing that built on, on um, Const uh, Constellation, on DAG, at the US Air Force. And that is why I say these guys, are, are, I've given them that for me, because the US or Air Force can't afford to be embarrassed and they can't afford breaches of security. What they can afford is money, and what they can afford is due diligence. So these guys will not, the US Air Force are not looking to embarrass themselves, and whoever is making the decision at the top 
really cares about the security of his country and his pension. And he could lose both or one or either or, or both of those if he makes the wrong choice. So everything is stacked against him making the wrong choice. So, so he's got all this, all he, he'd rather say no than, he'd rather not choose than choose the wrong one, is what I'm trying to say. So the, can you imagine the level of due diligence? If I said to you, you're on a million pounds a year, you've got an incredible pension, you're at the top of your game, you've got all these you know, stars and stripes on your, on your uniform and, and, and so on and so forth, your flags on your car, you get a chauffeur driven around, and you could lose it all if you choose the wrong project. And because of your decision, there's a security breach, or because of your decision, worse yet, there's a terrorist attack that we didn't, you know, or whatever. So, so, but what they have got, is time, intelligence, a lot of uh, you know, uh, university uh, geniuses at, uh, at their disposal, and money, endless pots of, of, of taxpayers' money, and they can just make more of it, print it, whatever. So if these guys uh, are willing to use the technology and put their name to it, then, it, then the, the, as far as I'm concerned, it's a bit like with Hadira Hashgraph, with Google being uh, on, the, on the governing board. It's, I don't need to do too much due diligence on this to know that these guys, despite the wishy-washy bit I said at the beginning, which is still true, uh, th th these are legit. They've got to be legit because I would be amazed if the US Air Force put their name to something and it turns out to be uh, a, you know, a, a con or not even a con, just not quite what was said or described or promised. So they've got some pretty, uh, pr pretty serious uh, partners. The US Air Force, by the way, are using these guys for the transfer of data and protecting that data in transit. So communicating uh, from um, the space, communicating to each other, communicating information back. Well, and when I say communicating, I don't just mean somebody on a space station picking up the phone and calling. I mean a satellite that records weather, for example, and, and, and sends that back to Earth. They're doing that through Constellation and, and the DAG. Okay, so these are, the, I think these are, the, I'm pretty sure not even uh, uh, Hadira have, have made this claim. These guys are claiming to be zero, zero layer crypto. A zero layer crypto. Now, this is something I've never explained before. So this is something I'm gonna explain quickly, but I need to use the board. So I'm gonna do it in a separate video now. Uh, just to explain this because it's quite important about the layers. I hope my analogy makes sense. So at the moment, forget this one down here. These are layer one. So there's the foundation, Bitcoin, layer one. Ethereum foundation, layer one. Ripple, HBAR and Constellation as some examples, okay? Now on those foundations, so on the Ripple foundation, on the HBAR foundation, you can build things. You can build, in this instance, uh, in this example, these are new build houses and I've built my house on the HBAR Foundation. You've built your house on the Ripple Foundation, somebody else has built their house on the Ethereum Foundation, and so on. So you can build things, apps, you know, developments, uh, developers can build apps and different, different things like that on these different foundations, these different platforms, okay? Now, the problem with that is that if you want to buy Ethereum and you own Bitcoin, or you want to send a smart contract uh, from the Constellation network to somebody who operates on the Hadira Hashgraph network. To do that, you've got to have a middleman. And the whole point of cryptocurrency in the first place was to take out the middleman. In monetary terms, it was to take out the way of the banks, um, but in smart contracts and things, it's to have uh, trust in a trustless society, if you like. So the only way we're able to do this at the moment is for you to go on to a third person, a middleman, uh, and to trade your Bitcoin to come out of the house and go into Ethereum, you've got to leave the house, it's raining, you get wet walking down the street and go into Ethereum. And, and the rain represents the sort of charges and things, the bad things that happen to you when you leave the house. So, um, at the moment you've got to come out of Bitcoin, you've got to go, sort of go up here, exchange it, some, go onto Binance for example, they will take your Bitcoin, they'll sell it for USDT as an example, and then they'll buy Ethereum with your USDT. So you've gone from Bitcoin to Ethereum through USDT. Now the beauty of layer zero is that it does away with the likes of the need for Binance and all these middlemen because you can just trade literally direct Bitcoin for Ethereum and you do that through this secret tunnel underneath. And this is layer zero. So layer zero is the foundation, if you like, that all of the other foundations can be built on. So you can have an app that sits on HBAR, but HBAR can sit on layer zero. Again, you can have an app on XRP, but they can talk to each other through the layer zero, through the secret tunnel down here, and there's no middleman. It's literally just seamless, in, in principle at least. So I hope that makes sense. Now back to the main video, back to you in the studio, Max.
Okay, guys, so hopefully you now know what, uh, you know, that I've explained clearly, hopefully to you about the different layers of crypto and how that works. And these guys claim to be a zero uh, layer crypto. So are they, which equals super connector for all of the projects. So as I explained, imagine different, I've just put here, imagine different makes of a car for different roads or no cross network mobile calls. So these guys could be that, that's the, the, the connector that sits under all, all cryptos. That is no small, small claim at all. Not proof of work or proof of stake, but peer review. So it's called, the, the, the sort of geeky term for it is proof of reputable observation, or PRO for short, proof of reputable um, observation. So what does that mean? It basically means a part of me buying the Mars bar in the shop uh, with the shopkeeper, a part of me making that transaction, I witness somebody else's transaction and they witness my transaction. And when they witness my transaction, they witness another transaction. And so everybody witnesses somebody else's transaction. So it's peer review. And that's why, that's where this comes in with this infinite transactions per second, a lot like sharding. The more people that are transacting, the more witnesses there are to other transactions, which means it goes quicker, the bigger it is. So the more transactions, so in theory, if something gets bigger, the more you add to it, the more you add to it, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, the more you add to it, and so on and so forth. And once that you start that cycle, it just becomes infinite. And one of the big things they say on, on their website is, look, big data is their market. That's, that's their thing. So, you know, a lot of cryptos have, uh, some of them are just nonsense, uh, and that's a fact. Um, but some of them uh, have niches or USPs, you know, unique selling points. For example, I did a video a while ago, link below, um, about Ecomi and NFTs uh, via VV. So Ecomi are a cryptocurrency that are concentrating on um, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, uh, and they're doing that through the VV, VE, VE platform. And I've done a video on that, which is again in the link below. By the way, NFTs are massive, and I'm gonna be doing a video, uh, uh, quite a long video, a deep dive into NFTs, um, and you're gonna to need, to, I, I really implore you to take, pay special attention to that video when it comes out, because it would, it can potentially make you and your family, and your family's family, very, very wealthy indeed. It's gonna be the future, I swear. Especially when Max keeps coming to me, my nine-year-old son keeps coming, Daddy, can I have another 20 pounds for V-Bucks? I promise you, this is gonna be absolutely massive, and we're right at the dawn of it. ETH uh, 2.0, smart contracts, all about the smart contracts. But, I mean, it's embarrassing because Hadir has actually just smashed what they intend to do before they've done it. They haven't even launched yet and Hadir has overtaken them on the smart contracts, but that, we're not talking about ETH today. So ETH's uh, USP is smart contracts. Economies is VV, for example. These guys, uh, um, Constellation, is big data. And I, I think this is important because it's a massive market. One of the things that they say on their uh, website is that because of the uh, uh, proof of reputable observation, uh, because of the peer review that I explained, these guys are able to scale and the problem that the world faces is that everything is information based. Now, if you think about it, and it's so true, everything is information based. So what do I mean? Okay, so it used to be that when Henry Ford made cars, you bought the car, you drove the car, and that was it. It was just mechanical, it was just an engine, okay? But now we're gonna have autonomous vehicles. So we've got a computer on board that is checking the road, sending information back about traffic. It's checking the tire temperatures constantly. It's, it's got sensors. If, if you've got a, a newer car and you start to get a flat, it comes up on a computer and says, you've got low pressure in one of your tires. Well, that, to do that, it's constantly checking the, the pressure in the tires. So, um, you know, computer chips are now in, in, in cars and they've got brains and you know, the new Tesla's now, it's just a giant iPad, then it's gonna be autonomous. So you've gone from a car that's got a mechanical crank on the front to start it, and a key, and that's it, all the way to a massive computer brain, okay? And that's all over the world. All vehicles eventually are all gonna have these computer brains. All that information has gotta go somewhere. Um, cameras, the camera that I'm talking to now, is recording this, this is information that's being recorded. Now, it used to be that it was just black and white photos that were burnt onto a cell, and now it's you know 4K, 8K, and, and, and the, the, the intensity, the quality of the um, footage, be it uh, camera, record, sound recording, or, or uh, you know, video, photo, is higher, is better, so that's heavier, more to carry. Um, 
you know, mobile phones, it, it, mobile phones, and it used, it used to play Snake, and that was about it, send text messages and call, and that was about it. And now phones, emails and things, and we all know about the whole thing, but there's, your phone is now more powerful than the computers that sent um, uh, uh, something, someone to space. So, or everything you can think of, your home, you know, with the, with the uh, smart lighting, Alexa, everything else that's um, in your home, homes are becoming smart. All of this information has to be stored somewhere. Um, and what they're saying is because they are scalable, they're saying that 90%, get this, 90% of all of the information in the world was created in the last three years. So man's been on earth for whatever it is, 4,000 years, okay? 90% of all the information that we have was created in the last three years. So, uh, and it's exponential. So it's gonna be more, so it'll, it'll be 92% next year of all of the data ever got, it was created in the last three years and, and so on. So what do we do with all this data? It's getting better quality and heavier and thicker and more, you know, um, 4K, 8K and so on. There's more of it. And inanimate objects before that used to do sunglasses, that used to be sunglasses, and now smart sunglasses and tell you information and that's got to go somewhere. So everything is getting more and more information heavy. So, so these guys are saying, don't worry world, we're going to take care of that because of the DAG because of the way the uh, directed acyclical graph works and because of the, you know, no blockchain and, and peer review. So the more people that join it, the more information, the more transactions, the more transactions, the quicker it goes. Because of that, because of the zero transaction cost, they say they're gonna make it affordable, energy efficient to store all of the data in the world, big data. And they actually say, and I quote, data is now more valuable and profitable than oil. And I've underlined profitable twice. The reason I say that is because they've started saying um, they've started saying these these datapreneurs, not entrepreneurs, datapreneurs, and they're people who are making money from data. And what do I mean by data? So your age, your sex, your um, your marital status, your uh, in the market for a blue Ford Fiesta, knowing that and giving it to the right uh, the right uh, guys who are selling those cars, and then getting you two to meet each other on the internet. Um, so, so that's what they mean by that. So and here I've just put AI, so artificial intelligence and, you know, uh, computer learning, autonomous vehicles, smart homes, computer learning, etc. So this is already a huge, huge market and it's getting bigger. It's like it's like it's doubling every day, you know, so it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Not, not only is this uh, market massive right now, it's getting bigger every year, you know, it's like it's doubling every day. I mean, it's not, but it's almost like it's doubling every day. It's exponential growth. So they're catering to an incredible market, which gives this project incredible opportunity. So the public network uh, that they have went live in quarter one of 2020. So next to launch, there is that what they call the Hypercube. Now the Hypercube, and I quote, is a user-friendly interface, open source for developers to build on the uh, Hypergraph network. So what does that mean in English? Okay. This is another thing that comes back around to that bit of a wishy-washy thing. The, you can't even build, um, devs can't even, developers, devs, can't even build on their platform yet. So if you have an app, um, let's say you invented Tinder and you want to run it on a software and you want to run it on uh, Constellation software, you can't. Now they're taking, at the moment, if you go on their website, uh, I'll put a link to their website in the description below. If you go on their website, you can, you can show um, uh, interest. So you can basically contact them and say, there's actually a button that says, you know, uh, uh, it says developers, you click on developers, you go down and it says, um, let us know that you're interested. You say, hi, uh, my name's Max and uh, I'd like to do NFTs on the Constellation Network. This is my business, this is my company, blah, blah, blah. They file away your information and when they're ready to launch, they'll give you a call or whatever. So, this, so they're making all these huge claims, but yet they're not even really open for business uh, to the public yet. Um, so th this is a really important point um, with the hypergraph. Now, um, Hadir is already there, and, and we know that, but, but this is uh, really important with the hypergraph. Why? Because if you think about it, nothing in your life at the moment is on the blockchain, uh, except if you own money. So if you own Bitcoin, you've got Bitcoin on the blockchain, you own it, it's on the blockchain, and everyone on the blockchain agrees that you own that one Bitcoin or two Bitcoin or whatever. Now you can spend that Bitcoin, you can go online and there are websites that will take Bitcoin and you can spend it. That's all you can do. Now you take a photo with your iPhone, you, um, you, know, you, own, you have a weather balloon, <laughs> 
uh, you happen to own a weather balloon and you want to, uh, it's telling you about um, temperatures and air pressure, and you're having that information sent down to you, you can store it on um, OneDrive with Microsoft, you can put it on the cloud with uh, um, uh, Apple. What you can't do is store it on the blockchain. There is no real easy public, uh, and this is the key, key bit, user-friendly interface on blockchain. So, so other than money, what's the point? What, you know, what are we all doing? So, but this, is, this hypergraph network is gonna change it. So what that means is you can actually take real life stuff, information, photos of your kids, videos for YouTubes, uh, weather balloon information, whatever it may be, um, you know, the skins for your uh, Minecraft or whatever, uh, your Tesla, uh, your, you know, anything you want, uh, a voice recording, and you can actually, through Hypergraph, you'll be able to store it on the Constellation Network. And that, like HBAR, is a game changer because it merges the real world with this technology. And that is the start of the revolution, I think, of the, of the technology revolution that we're, we're literally at the start of. Because, okay, we've got, you know, Bitcoin and all this is sort of 12, I think, yeah, 12 years old now. Um, and, and it's great, and it, and, it's, and it opened the door, if you like. And it sort of, we, we looked inside and we saw what could, could, be, what could happen. And then people like Lehman have, have taken that and then made it 100, 1,000, 10,000, uh, a million times uh, uh, more effective. But we're still at a transition phase where everybody's starting to, not everybody, very few people at the moment are, are learning about it, but more and more every day through videos like this are starting to learn about this technology. But, but the delay has been, in the uptake, in my opinion, has been that, that jump from really, really useful, decentralized, we all get it, we agree, to I can actually store the photos of my grandkids on this thing. I don't understand how it works, but it's, it's practically free, it's cheap, it's quick, it's, it's secure, that's the main thing, I can't get hacked, blah, 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 blah. We're, we're, we're starting now to head, we've set off from the house, we've built the house, we're starting to set off from the house, and we're on that journey. And, and that's where the general public start to, to interact and use this technology. Like the people who've had the COVID vaccine, and it was the temperatures in transit were tracked on the Hedera hash graph. People are already interacting with this technology and they don't even know it yet, but that will change and people will start to learn about, about um, this technology. They'll start to ask why this, how is this software so cheap? How is it so secure? It's so much better and yet it's so much cheaper than what I used to use. Um, so when that starts to happen, that's when we'll see um, a big, big change for all of us in this space. And I think, I honestly believe that Constellation are gonna play a big, big part in that. Okay, so final verdict, what do I think? This is the long and short of it, guys. I think this is a project, a serious project with massive potential. I would say this is the single biggest contender to HBAR out there that I've seen so far. Sol was good, but in that video, I explained why I think Solana isn't quite, quite there. And actually, uh, with some of the claims, it doesn't come close to Hadira Hashgraph. I don't think even the diehard Hadira Hashgraph guys, even Lehman himself, I think, would have to acknowledge that these guys have got something. So this is definitely, definitely one to watch. The price today, is 0.2, uh, uh, which is 20 pence, or 0.28 uh, dollars. And the price of um, HBAR today is 0.225 uh, pence, or, uh, or 30 uh, cent, and 0.3 dollars. So the prices are very, very similar. If you have got a, a, a couple of quid spare, I would seriously consider investing um, in, some, in some DAG. I really do think that this could go somewhere. I know this is gonna go somewhere. I really, really believe that we're gonna see this come on and it really is gonna go somewhere. So that's what I think. I'm actually gonna call this one a draw. I'm gonna quickly do this live update. So as of yesterday, it was announced that SKUX partners, new customer, with Hadira Hashgraph. Who are SKUX? I hadn't heard of them either. So they're a company that create digital coupons and incentives for consumers. What does that mean? It means that they create money off vouchers and incentives. So they email you and say, if you go uh, to www.walmart.co.uk today, you get 
$10 off a bag of nappies. They uh, operate in America, obviously. Uh, again, big whoop. Well, it is a big whoop because the coupon industry is a billion dollar industry uh, in America. So you might be thinking, okay, Max, we're a big company, but there are loads of other big companies that are already uh, cons customers. Uh, yeah, but this is, a cu this is a customer with a slight difference. Have a listen to, their li to the list of their board of directors. There are more, but these are the key ones for me. So Deb Henretta, she is a director of SKUX, and she's also a director of P&G. Massive, massive company in America. Um, Scott Sandlin, director of SKUX, also a director at Walmart. And that's interesting because, you know, we've got the whole Walmart doing the Western Union uh, uh, thing and doing international now uh, worldwide uh, payments. So it'll be interesting to see where that leads. James Ray, JP Morgan, uh, director again at SKUX and also director at JP Morgan. And finally, um, Jan Najima, and he is a director at CNBC News. So I think one of, if not the biggest, uh, certainly one of the top three biggest news channels in America. And one of their directors is now a director of a company that is a customer of Adira Hashgraph. So again, leaking into that, you know, the normal person's uh, uh, subconscious. Okay, that's it guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like and, uh, and leave a comment in below. Help me out with the transactions per second and the finality timings because like I say, I, I need to know that that's for sure and I don't know what the finality, time to finality is. That's legit, I genuinely don't have a clue. So let me know on that. If you've liked this video, give it a like as I say. Um, I promise you, you want to subscribe and hit that notification bell because you're going to want to watch the NFT video that's going to be coming shortly. I've got loads of more interesting videos coming out shortly, all different things, property, uh, investing, lease options, installment contracts, how to buy property for very, very little if that's a space you want to get into, different cryptos that I might be investing in, books that I've read, book reviews, uh, uh, everything that, that you might hope you find interesting, a tour of a castle. I was literally today, if you, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that today I was literally at a ruin of a castle in North Wales with a friend of mine who bought it and we were doing a tour. That's a YouTube video that's coming out soon. But if you only watch one more of my videos the rest of your life, please, I implore you, watch the NFT video that's coming out soon. Hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell and you'll be the first to know when your video is ready. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you soon.